Hello and welcome to Gear Rock Farms. It's been a busy spring day. We've been getting a lot of projects done. Currently I got uh, Darby doing some tillage, so if you haven't watched that video, make sure to watch that one. But uh, my dad and I are going to work on a fence now. Uh, it's up here on uh, top of our hill. It's a border fence that we had to redo because cattle were getting all last year. It was getting pretty bad, so time to make some improvements and take care of the fence. Exactly. It's easier chasing cattle. Oh, for sure. Especially when they're in the neighbor's crops. And it's a nice cool day today. It's a, it's a decent day to work. So oh, it cooled off quite a bit. I think it's going to snow in a couple of days again. For the past week now, you've been tearing out the old fence. and we're... Took out the old fence. There were still snow banks down there yet. So some of the posts were froze in, but it was still nice working. So we, cut, we had to cut a lot of brush, a lot of trees on the fence. And uh, I've got probably two weeks into this already. So we're going to run four barbs, four point. Twelve and a half gauge. There was quite a few T posts already in this border that we were able to reuse. There's, but I did bring some good treated posts up to put. So every three steel and then one treated up on top here. This is where our cows graze all summer more. So we're gonna maybe put five wires just over this section, just because we can. Yeah, up until what three years ago, four years ago, you didn't have any corn up here. No, so, we only had corn here two years. They were grazing right along, but now they go back in the hay. Maybe, a, maybe late next summer we'll let the cows start. Take it back like it was. Take it back more. Yeah. Best part is, is when you do redo the whole thing, you get all the brush out. Yeah. All that underbrush and all that, all them thorn bushes and stuff. It's just you, you don't want a fence if you got to mess with all that stuff. So yeah. keep it down. Man. Nice, nice clean slate. All right, so Dad's been uh, setting up posts, and you can see he strung out a wire to give him a. Uh, a reference point to where the old so, fence was. So what we have to do, because our land is, everything is like this. You get way down in the woods, there's two real sharp dips. So you gotta do it in like sections, as you string your wire out. So one spool of wire go a quarter mile, that's what? It's 1,320 feet. Then about every maybe 150 feet, we'll like pull the wire, or just gonna match right up with what's originally up here. and. Um, it's really interesting how crooked some of these fences get after a hundred years of just patching them up and pretty soon they're nailing the nailing them to the trees and yeah making it work just just so it works but then when you clean it all out you look at it and you're like now we can pull a nice straight wire and start with a fresh slate again so we're just going in sections with the wire because we can't see both ends that's there's the terrain is too crooked for that Yep. But a lot of the old wire we uh, pulled out. There's actually two netting nettings that were in here, probably from when it was homesteaded, and then I don't know, maybe maybe 80 years ago, another guy put some in, and then the barb on top. And you can, I mean, this stuff as I was rolling it up, you basically just as you're rolling, it's just falling apart in your hands. It's so bad. That's why you can't patch an old fence when it starts looking like this. Yeah, it's, it's know, iron. Just, it just it rusts and goes. But goes what back. I've noticed is, is down in the woods, because it, I'm sure a lot of this was put up all at the same time. So it's a, that wire's the same age. But any of the wire that's in the shade is it's still rusty, but it's not nearly as bad. Mm -hmm. That the sun is actually really raises more havoc on your wire than just being old i've even noticed some of that old equipment that guys just throw in the woods that that lasts a lot longer than if it was sitting out in no a i had somewhere. a i had an old guy tell me one time park it under the trees and i don't i don't remember exactly what trees he was but some of these trees there's like a oil you know and the leaves and it rains it's his theory was it almost the like sap was like lubricating <laughs> it and keep that. but it does i think just the fact of the shade but there's a little bit of truth to some of that but yeah. um it's probably better off in the shade somewhere even though it ain't out of the elements sun really breaks stuff down. breaks stuff down especially rubber like hoses and things they claim like a jockey one time told me that uh some of the tillage equipment from the, out in the Dakotas and some of these places where the humidity is lower, yeah. more. It looks, the paint looks really good yet compared to the stuff around here. Even the stuff that's in the shed around here will pick up moisture. So it does go bad just from being. But anyway. Back to that netting and barbed wire talk for the people that aren't in egg watching this. Netting is, is stuff guys would use 
for like a sensitive area where you'd have like calves or a lot of cattle. Okay, so here's a, here's it, it, this is <laughs> it's so bad already, but where you got like the uh, you know the the wire is all woven. Yeah, almost like chicken wire, but a little bigger. So I think what it was is way back people grazed everything as much as they possibly could because to make all that feed even in the summer if they didn't have to feed they would graze whether it was beef cows or, or even milking cows that had they maybe some of them even let the calves go with them so they didn't have electri electricity out here until the 40s so netting fence was your you know your protective border so you we can put four barbs up that'll hold adult livestock even stuff breeding age pretty good but yeah, you probably can, six seven hundred pounds yeah. and bigger you get calves i know guys that that been doing that and they're kind of new at it and the calves will just sneak under the wire once once they realize there's something better on the other side of the fence it's cannot, always it's always better on the other side of the fence. <laughs> it's always greener yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it, that's where i think that truth comes from all the old fences had this netting put in them and it, it's it's grown into the trees and all over and in some places you want to clean off like here we cleaned off the bank where kind of had a mound in the fence and leveled everything up got all that but it's all full of this netting wiring and it's like you can't even do nothing with it yeah we still have that in like our calf basher we call that was it. where we got it and i think if you if we were to go to beef i mean we could do some electric but i'd prefer to just just uh maybe take to get some netting and put it right over the top of the barbs even especially on the borders fences the borders or places that's along crops if it's kind of long like woods or wasteland more there's probably not so likely there there if they would go in there they're just going in there for shade the calves and they'd come back yep. but the crop once they find that crop you're done they're, they're gonna yeah especially some uh you know two-month-old corn they're gonna love those that. beef calves aren't stopping for that so anyway that's why the netting is so good so that's what we would probably and like i said it's a, it's work but to me it's not stressful because we keep up with it well we're gonna keep working here it's getting pretty windy up here i'm getting chilly we better start doing something <laughs> hopefully you guys can hear it with this all this wind but good working weather guy's still in there but it's an elm tree so i don't put nails into you know some nice looking oak tree or a walnut or something but this but we're using it for like a brace because of that where we can only go like 150 feet and then we have to stop and tie it to something you know because what happens we got places where the wires 100 feet in the air and the next place it's on the ground you can't lift it off so i like like this guy's growing in so yeah, so now we, we dipped into the woods here after we kind of got that line straight up top there. And uh, Dad kind of wanted to show you what we're doing down in here. Using some of the old posts and and uh, readjusting some of the ones that were there, getting them upright. And, but like well, this guy, you, this guy, he's... There's a lot of them there. because there's there's like a wind row of trees that I had to cut off here, but they're growing into the... The posts are growing right in. I suppose the roots are kind yeah, of... Yeah, so that we don't even bother. Yeah, even though we're doing sections like we were talking on the hill, you still got to... You still got to think about the fence as a whole so that it doesn't look so choppy. Well, if you're going to do it, we're going to do it right. This is probably from, I'm going to guess, 60 to 80 years ago. I mean, between every T-post, there was one of these. And just basically just dangling in the, in the wires. And then the T posts were put in later. And that's how they made posts. They're all wood and they would split them. I what's, did a lot what's of that, What's that type of tree that's supposed to last a long time? Well, you got uh, locusts. Yeah. So, and there's no locusts on this farm that I've seen yet. I think some of that stuff might have been planted where, you know, where people built and stuff. And then uh, white oak. You would have sawed lumber for building a barn or something. A lot of the, the tops and stuff, they would try to, and then what they do is they would wedge us to. 
you can see this was split. There was probably four of them out of that one trunk, mm -hmm. you know, different places. So I did a lot of that when I came here. I had most of my fences put up, you know, what I didn't, so I didn't have to buy these posts. We didn't have no money. So I got maybe 15 years out of it. And there's still a few here and there. There's a few and they got really hard. So what we did is we, we stacked them up crosswise and then we poured waste oil on top of them. I think I had some roofing steel on the ground. They wouldn't be in the ground and I would stack them up so it almost looked like a small building. Maybe be about six feet, seven feet high. Make your own treated posts. And yeah, they were treated posts and then I put steel on top. And I did this when back in 88 we sawed lumber at my dad's farm. So then I had a lot of those tops. And I was young and tough and it was, just, it was actually kind of got addicting so I ended up with probably about five six hundred posts like that. Pour that waste oil down through there then they get really hard and dry and what that does is repel all the bugs and all that stuff. But yeah you got locusts there's uh, there's probably some other species that ain't so popular around here. That yeah, maybe these guys know. If one oh. of you from down south what do they use for fence posts down there you know other than the pre, you know the pre-made stuff. Yeah, and the treated ones, so we, we try to get the black treated, but Creso, some laws changed on some of that. Then there's the green treated. I know they're not as good, because we put a few of those in back when we started here, and they're already rotted off like 10 years ago already. So you kind of think they're great, and then you paid the extra money, you didn't really get the punch on them. True. They're bang. But, um, bang for your buck. But anyhow, the Amish will use a lot of them uh, locusts. I noticed that they would they would custom build fences for people, and then they would actually sell them some of those too. You know, it'd be kind of a product they could put in there. And so to buy a, I don't know what they, they call it, an eight inch. It's probably barely six by eight feet long. They're like twenty five to thirty dollars a piece now. And railroad ties, they used to be. I got them for two dollars a piece way back, like twenty five years ago. A whole whole truckload or semi load we bought and so we went through all those already and some of those rotted off too already right at the ground but still they got a really blunt post and then a new one I did buy some now well it's maybe about eight ten years ago we bought a, a pallet of, or a bundle I guess it must have been 25 in there mm -hmm. those were like I think just under $20 a piece then so now I think a new tie, you could be talking $50, $60. That's insane. If you were going to cement it into your barnyard and hang your main gate on it, it's probably worth that. You know, it, it's it's okay. Just you you couldn't fence your whole farm with something like that. Well, since we're talking about materials, what uh, barbed wire are you? Using? So this, I, I believe it's a 12 and a half gauge four point. And we were kids, I never seen the four point, and then there's two point, and it's usually just a few more dollars for the four point. We just go for the four point. It, it's pretty snarly, but if you're gonna put it up. Yeah, if you're putting the time in to do something, you just, might as well. I, I, I gotta say, when you, when you graze cattle, there ain't nothing like having a, a decent border, like you said, especially the perimeter of the property. Yeah, your cow gets out into your field or in some hay or something that it isn't, it isn't quite such a big issue, but even then, it's so much time invested in the try and frustration. Yep. And once the, once you teach your cows, they get through. And they're always going back. They're <laughs> they're going through. So, on this farm, I don't know. It's been a long time, but they they usually get out where somebody didn't shut a gate. Or like when we're doing crops, sometimes you think, oh, I can go. And, and I'll be back through in a... Uh, yeah, it's like they sense that it's open. Yeah. That could, could be like two, three hundred yards away. They like, yeah. That's yeah, like... and I think what happens is when, when they see, the one one sees the other one wander through, they start actually running. Yeah. Because we, we do that where we, we give them hay fields so they get all excited like, hey, he's giving us a it's field. A new spot, yeah. And you cannot stop them. They'll run you yeah, over. Yeah, like kids for recess. And we've had them where they got out and we just thought well we'll just hang out for a while let them fill up a little bit like it just be some hay field because to try to chase them in right away when they get that it's like let them get a little bit of it first you know so they're not they're not so hard to move out otherwise you cannot get them to turn around they just keep running every direction it's just nature cattle this is a one side of the 40. This is where we had the pull off. It's a little tricky. Sometimes we might even have to tie it to a tree off to the side or something until we get everything pulled reasonably tight and then we take it back off and then we go another couple hundred feet. You can't just pull the wire and put the clips on. So here's a case where 
when this tree fell, it fell on the post and pushed it into the ground, and then, then it got cut back. So that one's pretty much there for. And it's permanent. Permanent. Yeah, that'll be an, that'll be an artifact one day. They'll know we're here. <laughs> well, th those are those are gonna be kind of nasty if they're in the wrong place. For sake of cattle, or you may drive them over. Here's one too growing into the tree. But what's going to happen, it's an elm tree, so probably get the elm disease like they all do eventually. And then once it rots out, we'll be able to, you know, it might be 10 years. Or... Another one growing in. Yeah, that's that, I think that's the fourth one. Right? And the funny thing is, is it was probably just a little sapling, something like this. So then it just, you know, it consumed the fence. So like here, for instance, we, we had some treated posts, so we always put them on the high spots and, and we put the biggest ones in the low spots for weight. So it keeps the fence down in. And like here, so this is a used railroad tie, just simply the weight of it, because it got this sharp point in here and being way down in the woods here, it's not like we're gonna get a cat down here and straighten everything up. There's a little bit of a waterway here. We don't really wanna be disturbing the soil. Then I just put another post in that way. And we do this quite often where we'll put another wire or two under so we don't have to pull the main fence so low because we're so uneven right here. It's always going to be a spot where something's going to try to sneak through. It's just how it is. We try to really enforce those spots. Here there just happened to be a, another elm tree sitting right in the fence. So we use that. At least that's a very good anchor until he, he something happens to him anyway. Then we'll have to put something else there. And then down here, I, I brought a couple posts that were, they were actually in the barnyard before we built the new barn. We took them out of the concrete and they were pretty decent yet. So what I've done is, is uh, we tip them upside down right where they met the ground or the concrete. They, they were a little decayed there. So if you tip them upside down, you kind of use the part that wasn't, in, wasn't exposed here too. This, this is an old high line pole. And when they replaced all the high lines near us, I had a talk with those guys if no one, if the landowners, some of the landowners didn't need them or didn't, weren't fencing, so we were able to get a hold of some of that stuff. And, and the small, the tops were actually worse than the bottoms. I think they put like eight feet in the ground mm -hmm. with those so that you could get a couple posts that were almost like new out of that bottom. They were, that was some good treatment way back then when those were put in. So anyway, then they're big and heavy and that's where we use them down in. Yeah, right in here. There was snow in here when I cut the brush back. Right in here we were slipping and sliding. See, like here, this is the bottom of a highline pole. And if you look here, on top, see the treatment only goes in about two to three inches. The centers actually rot out. What it needs to do is you get like a lid from, from a barrel or something, anything. A disc, old disc blade, or sometimes they'll cut them out of slant. Yeah, just, keep the water from sitting I mean, up there. I mean, you can do all kinds of stuff to make it better, but this is actually where the split is in the in the border where where my fence stops and the neighbor's fence starts. We did this one up maybe about 15 years ago now. It was quite the wreck when we uh, came here. We were just patching it to the finally we just did just what we're doing up there, and we put five barbs in. Yeah, so there's the the wood portion of the fence and as you can see it's it's a lot more technical than just <laughs> on some level ground where you can lay it all out at one time and the other thing is is getting equipment we can't just like the fields up here maybe another 100 feet so i came with the poles i let them roll down the hill as far as they go and they'd bump in a tree or something and then we use like a rope and wrap it around it kind of lasso it and then drag two it. of us could drag them downhill until we got down in because we're not going to be able to drive down in here with equipment we, especially now in the spring you know so there's a lot of places on our farm where you can't get to you have to carry everything in
So we're back down in the yard after the, the nice fencing video. Hopefully you guys learned something. It was nice for us to document that, a little bit of history for the farm. If you guys got any tips or tricks or know of uh, certain types of materials that you like using, leave comments down below. We'd greatly appreciate it. But we're gonna end it off here. Thanks for making it to the end of the video. Make sure to like, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff. And uh, check out our other videos.